and welcome back to my channel. My name is Doug and I have another fountain pen video for you today. Today we're going to look at the year end, not urine, hey. year end 878 fountain pen. And let's go right now. Okay, so here we are with the year-end 878 fountain pen. There's a bit of a story behind this particular pen, so if you just want the details, please feel free to use the timestamps in the description to skip ahead to other parts of the video. Bjorn, get your finger off that mouse. What else does it do? Press that red button. I, wait, is it going to kill everybody? Press that blue button. Okay, so let's go. This is an origin story. This is the origin of my PAS. Uh, PAS is a TLA for Pen Acquisition Syndrome. What is a TLA, you might ask? A TLA is a three-letter acronym. Of course, there is another affiliated syndrome that appears with PAS, and that is GAS, or Gear Acquisition Syndrome, which is the obsessive accessorizing around your fountain pens with ink, paper, roll stops, pen holders, and yes, I'm looking at you, Jen. So if you have these two afflictions, you suffer from past gas. It was the website and Facebook site, Too Shiny For You, that got me into acquiring fountain pens. Okay, so let me tell you about this website, Too Shiny For You. This is the website that drew me into buying Chinese fountain pens. They claim are free. I found out after a while that they sell you a free fountain pen for $13 and $14 US shipping. Uh, the pen is only worth three or $4. So let's go through and look. There are a number of pens here. Uh, you can track down all of these models. This is a Jinhao X750 right here that is free. And if you click on it, you'll see that it is free. Uh, they want you to add Picasso ink cartridges for $12.99 US for a pack of five cartridges. That's insane. These are Chinese. You can buy them in bulk by the jar for like three bucks. Um, and they want you to buy another one of these pens, the Eureta Prestige. So you turn that off. You say, okay, well, if I just want this free fountain pen, this Eureta Blue Marble, which we know is a Jinhao X750, say we add that to our cart. And we see that it is $12.95 US shipping. So that is not a bargain. This pen can be had for $4 US free shipping from eBay. And there are numerous examples of this. Uh, they have the X450 here as well, here somewhere. There's an X450, you can get this for $4. There's a Moonman S1. They're selling them for $69 US. They say on sale from $84.99, you can get these for $22, $23 US, free shipping on Etsy. So don't be fooled by Too Shiny For You. They are buying these pens in bulk and selling them to you for inflated prices, even when it says it's free. There's my rant. I was looking for a pen for my friend for Christmas and I found a, well, I, I now know it is a Jinhao X450. I got two of them for free from Too Shiny For You for only $20 US shipping. I thought it was quite a bargain. Of course, the pens are only $5 US each with free shipping, but I didn't know that at the time. So I got the pen and I loved it. And I found out it was only five bucks and I felt, well, I can't give them that pen. That's way too cheap for Christmas. So I saw this year end 878, uh, as now I know the pen to be. It was called an Irorita, Irorita, I can't pronounce it, Nebula. I'll put it up here so you can see how it's spelled. And was it was sleek and sexy and only $12.98 US free shipping. 
So I bought it for my friend. He'd never know it was only twelve ninety five. I mean, look at this thing. It looks gorgeous without the sticker. Well, he wouldn't find out because it never came. I ordered it in November and I gave up on it in late January. I contacted Too Shiny For You through their website, Nobody Home. So I figured I was screwed on it. Then late in February, it showed up in my mailbox. I was very surprised. It was just in time for me to give it to my friend for his birthday. He was thrilled with the heavy, expensive looking pen. Within days, I got a call from him asking where he could get another. By this time, I had clued into the scam of the two shiny for you and had discovered the pens on eBay. I admitted to him that they were only like five bucks. He was thrilled and asked me to get him six more and he'd pay for it. Well, those came and he ordered another six. I think in total, he bought about 16 of these guys. He gives them out as gifts to friends and family when he travels. The other day, he asked me why I hadn't done a review of this pen. I said, well, I don't own one. So he gave me this one to review and to keep. What a guy, eh? What goes around comes around. So it's back in my hands again after about a year. Um, and we're going to look at this pen today. So here we go with the year end, not urine, 878. What I'm going to do is look at the parts and features of the pen, tell you what I like and what I don't like, show some measurements and some size comparisons, and then do a writing sample. This is a fairly heavy metal pen. In a gunmetal finish that I think looks like polished pewter. It has a flat top and a domed bottom and a spiral groove that runs the length of the cap and barrel. I don't know how they machine these pieces, but it is very clever as they have shaped the illusion of double rings at the finial, at the end of the cap, and at the end of the barrel. The clip is extremely stiff and extends from a tang that is held together with a screw at the very end, it's brass. In fact, this entire pen is made of brass. The cap tapers up slightly to where it meets the body and those fake double rings. And then the barrel is fairly straight until about here when it tapers away towards the end of the faux blind cap. The cap snaps off and there's a plastic liner in there that you can feel engaging as you push it shut. Quite often I find it difficult to actually get it to close and I have to exert a lot of effort to get it to snap shut. Inside we find a section of the same material, that gun metal, which tapers down towards again a faux ring at, towards the nib. I must say the aesthetic design is well done with the simulated rings echoing each other across the pen. And here we have a number five size gold and chrome two-tone nib. It says year N 22 KGP. And there's a year end logo right there. I take that uh, 22 karat gold plate with a grain of salt. That's the only branding on this pen if you disregard the sticker on the back here, which has some branding. There's the year end logo right there and actually has 878 right there. Inside there is a converter and this is not a standard international converter, but these pens do take um, a Parker long cartridge, a Lamy long cartridge, or one Parker short cartridge, or you can put two Parker short cartridges into the barrel piggyback style. The cap posts securely, but not very deeply. It does make for a very long pen. At a full 18 grams for just the cap alone, this does back weight the pen but the body is 32 grams, so there's plenty of weight to, to counter that. 
It is not uncomfortable to write with it posted, but it's plenty long enough unposted to write comfortably, which is how I prefer it. The section is slippery because it's that metal, so if you have slippery or, or oily fingers, you might have difficulty with, especially with that taper. So, what do I like and what do I don't like about this pen? I do like the overall look. I think it's very sleek, very shiny, but not too shiny for me. And I love the pewter gunmetal gray. I love the spiral that reflects light as you twirl it. I do like the way the pen feels in the hand when I'm writing with it. What I don't like is the small nib. And why have gold two-tone? It's not really that bright gold, so it's not a big problem. But why have gold and chrome on a gunmetal gray pewter style pen that is so sleek and so stealth and yet you open it up and there's a gold and chrome nib. If that were gunmetal gray or better yet black, that would be way cool. This would be a way, way cool pen. I don't like the way that pen caps. You can hear how loud it is when it caps, but <clears throat> that's how much effort it takes to cap it. I feel like I'm going to break it or it's eventually going to wear out. And I don't like that it is a bit of effort to get it uncapped as well each time. Plus, I don't like the overall slickness of the pen. I find it a little bit slippery, um, especially on the section, uh, but mostly because it's a fingerprint magnet. So I keep having to get my polish cloth out and polishing off all the fingerprints. So maybe I'll polish it and just leave it in my new pen stand. How's that? Hoisted on his own petard. That's what I say. But is the sport to have the engineer hoist with his own petard? And what does he say? He says, Cosa finita. I'll put up the translation right here. But, again, I digress. Really, overall, for five bucks? Seriously. Seriously, five bucks? This is a hell of a good pen. And it has some really nice heft to it. And what you see, I was just at the pen store today, and I picked up a, a Platinum, um, not a Prera, Oh, geez, I've forgotten the name of it. It was a Platinum Plazier. That's what it was. A Plazier. Sounds like Brazier with a PL. Ay, caramba! Um, and it was like $20 Canadian. And it wrote very smoothly and everything, but it's it feels like a disposable pen. This pen does not feel disposable. It is substantial. So five bucks, good pen. So let's look at some measurements, some size comparisons, and a writing sample. Well, I keep on thinking about you, Sister Golden Hair Surprise. Okay, here we are back for the writing sample portion with the year end. Eight seven eight, and this is a fine nib. The ink today is Mont Blanc Oyster Gray. I really thought that uh, this pewter pen should have sort of a grayish gunmetal ink to go with it. And this Mont Blanc Gray, it, uh, when you write with it, I can see the oyster part because it's kind of warm. And then when, you draw, when it dries, you get this slate gray with a, a bit of shading in it. It's very nice. Let's check the wetness on this pen. And by the way, the paper I'm writing on is Clairefontaine uh, 90 gram.
this is a very, very wet pen. Of course, that oyster gray is a very wet ink as well. The line you get out of it is between a fine and a medium, I'd say. Um, let's see if we can get any line variation. Let's start light. I don't want to push it too far, but you do get a little bit of line variation there. I've got to practice my S loops. Not too bad. This is a very smooth pen. And let's listen to it. Very nice. And reverse writing. It does do it a bit, but again, not very scratchy, but uh, it's very, very dry. And some quick writing. That feed seems to be keeping up very nicely. I did want to briefly show the Mont Blanc. It comes in these cool boxes. You pull out a little tray and you take out the foam and it's really nicely, tightly packed in there. And there's a little thing in there for your ink to talk about your ink and they have the coolest bottles these shoe style that have this little step on them so that when you get down in your level of ink you just tilt it forward and you can get the ink from that part of the reservoir over here and fill up even more it's a very clever design uh, a very wide mouth on them a really, really nice bottle. If you didn't like the ink for the price, they're very, very cheap, relatively. That's 60 millimeters of ink. I think it cost me 20 bucks. Uh, but if you don't like the ink, you can, uh, once you've used the ink, take the label off and just fill it with your favorite ink because those are, those are keepers, those bottles. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell to make sure that you get a notification whenever I upload a video. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.